Question. You want to print a holder for these two stepper motors. It will be one piece. The load is small, there is not much heat, but what is very important, the distance between shaft must be exactly 100 mm. Which material would you use? PLA, PTG or ESA? And I will tell you my solution later. Hello, welcome to my tech fund on other material testing video. Inslogix 3D sent me these filaments for the testing. This is PLA Pro, PTG Pro and ASA. And I got these filaments for free, but I'm not paid to create this video, so this is not a sponsored video. Actually, it is sponsored by Polymaker, who became a channel sponsor in the meantime. Now, the Inslogix is a new name on the market, but with several years of experience. And finally, I got the permission to mention that it belongs to the Sunlu, but here they are focusing more on uh, higher quality and uh, more on the functional and engineering materials. So now we test their nylons too, but let's focus now on these three basic materials. Let's start with unboxing. These are completely different material types, but I believe that this video may be useful especially for beginners, because we will have a direct comparison between these three basic filaments. Interesting, this is vacuum packaging, uh, these two no PLA and PTG, maybe the air leaked in, but there is a desiccant inside. All three bags are resealable. So this is PLA, PTG, ASA, and unfortunately because of the camera, all three are in white color. And uh, pay attention that here we have more filament compared to the PTG. And the reason for this is the difference in density. The ASA is the lightest and to have one kilogram on the spool we need more filament compared to the PTG which is the heaviest and the PLA is somewhere between but closer to the PTG. I also noticed that the colors are a little bit different. PLA is the whitest, then a little bit darker is the PTG and the ASA is some kind of yellowish white. I really like these plastic spools and we have the information about the drying on them. The maximum temperature resistance is 70 degrees Celsius on the spool for the PLA and PTG. And for the ASA, the temperature resistance of the spool is 90 degrees Celsius. This is very important information for the drying. Just quickly to check the print settings, which is written on the spool. For the PLA, the print temperature 195 and 205 degrees Celsius, bed temperature between 50 and 60 degrees Celsius. More information we have on the website, but I think there is a mistake because unit for impact strength is joules or some variation. I think they mean here bending strength, but nothing special about it. PL is stronger than ABS in this. And pre-dry, this means uh, we don't have to dry, I can use it out of the box. And here we have some different print temperature if we want to print on higher speeds. For PTG, 240 and 255 degrees Celsius and the bed temperature between 70 and 80 degrees. On the website again a lot of information, maybe worth to mention that this is a chemical resistant material. And the print settings, again we have different temperature for higher speeds. And for the ASC, 250 and 260 degrees Celsius, bed temperature between 80 and 100. And for the ASC, what is worth to mention that it is UV and weather resistant material. And from D3, it has the highest temperature resistance. Print settings, again some different temperatures for the higher speeds, but not so fast like with the PLA or PTG. And very useful information, weight of the empty spool is 232 grams. I'm not sure if you can see that inside, if I would twist two ends of this spool, probably I would separate it. This is very useful for refill kits and I can see a lot of similarities with the bamboo spools. Actually this is explained inside the box too. This is PLA Pro and I am inserting into the AMS unit. And this is PTG Pro, it also goes into the AMS unit. And the printing will be on P1P using textured PI sheet without any glue. ASA goes into the X1 carbon. And we have more filament on the spool very close to the edge. Always check if it is still on the spool and not fall down. And my exon carbon is connected to the wall. Engineering plate with some glue on it and of course inside the enclosure. Different settings for generic PLA, 220 on the nozzle, 12 will be the flow rate. And this is the default part cooling. 
and my typical test objects printed all at once. For the PETG there is one small modification, 260 will be on the nozzle and everything else is without change. For generic ASA I raise the print temperature to 270 degrees Celsius, 12 will be the max flow and the part cooling are reduced to max 50%. And of course same test objects. This is PLA and the printing is quite fast by default. Printing is almost finished, these are the last few vertically printed test objects. The PTG looks good too and it is also quite fast. And some PTG objects will be printed too. In I can see a few strings here and there, but nothing special. Even through closed door I can feel the smell of the ABS or ASA, so I enable the chamber fan, only 10% but it should be enough because my Exxon Carbon is connected to that hole on the wall, otherwise the printing is completely ok. Finally it is finished, I wasn't in this room because the smell is quite strong, it would be good to have better ceiling on these doors and I will not open them until I exhaust a little bit that air, at least few minutes. After a few minutes I can turn off the fan. Objects are perfectly straight, there is no warping, but in this case that smell was the biggest problem. Just in case they are even labeled, ready for mechanical testing. Now let's check the shrinking, the design length of this test object is 18 mm and with PLA and PTG I am not expecting any shrinking only with the ASA, but let's measure it. I'm measuring about the elephant foot, this is PLA, very accurate. This is PETG, very similar dimension. And now ASA. And this shrinking is just a little bit bigger than average ASA, which should be 79.6 millimeters. Tensile test with horizontally printed objects. I'm starting with the PLA. This number is average from 2, PTG, ESA. In all three cases, these are close to the average values for these material types, only usually PLA is slightly stronger compared to the PTG, and yes, PLA has a higher tensile strength compared to the ASA. And now layer at reagent test with vertically printed objects. PTG. ESA. This is my rating for these brake loads, but basically PLA and ASA very similar to the average value for these material types. PLA slightly above it, uh, ASA slightly below it, only PETG is noticeable weaker compared to the average value for this material type. Shear test with horizontally printed objects. Vertically printed where the layer attraction is important. Printed horizontally there is no significant difference between these three materials, but printed vertically here the layer attraction is quite important and the PLA performs the best. The creep test the deformation under the constant load of 1.25 kg, PLA, PTG and ASA. Fifteen point fifty. Fifteen point fourteen. Sixteen point sixty two. Interesting completely different results which I expected, usually the PLA has the smallest star deformation but the most creeping on day 5 and the ASA has the biggest star deformation, I will see what will happen in 5 days, I believe that here we will see the smallest creeping at the end. This is the last 5th day and even without measuring I can see the biggest creeping on the PLA part but let's measure them. 19.99 PTG 16.29 70.69. This is a great example to present the main difference between these three material types. Only one thing is not typical that this PTG has a smaller deformation compared to the average PTG from 20 materials I tested on this channel, but the creeping is very similar. 
and this is the dimension distance between two reference surfaces and we can see with the PL it constantly grows and with the ASA for example this is quite horizontal but basically the difference between two days we can see here so this is directly the creeping and we can see quite big creeping with the PLA which is typical for this material unfortunately and the smallest creeping we can see on the ASA material temperature test in the oven and three on the right side are the materials from this video this is speed up timeless video but the first deformation I could notice on PLA then PETG and of course at the end and the ASA. On 99 degrees Celsius I stopped the experiment and I always want to check how hard are these materials and interesting PLA is quite hard maybe it goes through the annealing process but of course the ASA is best in this test and still hard and less elastic even on this high temperature. That's why I'm printing these clips for locking end of the filament from ABS or ASA materials. They will not deform during the drying process even on a 70 degrees Celsius. Just for fun I need one more temperature test. This object is from PLA but I will have this uh, two times and one of them will be lightly annealed. This means when the printing is finished I will set the bed temperature to 90 degrees Celsius and immediately when it reaches this temperature I am turning off the heating. This can be done only with the thinner objects of course. They are fixed to this solar extrusion and I am placing them in the oven and they have some small tilt to the back so they will start to fall in the same position. I have this small thermometer, it is accurate but it has a small delay and for my surprise both PLA fall down even the annealed version, of course then PETG and ASA. Recently I tried this simple annealing method but it looks like it's not working with every PLA. Torque or twist test with horizontal and vertical imprinted test objects and I'm starting with the horizontal ones. Side by side all three materials and uh, mostly I'm recording here the load at 90 degree rotation. 1.3 and a vertical printed PLA. In this case I can record only the maximum load. 1.2 1.4 More or less typical behavior, this printed in vertical position breaks more suddenly but um, let's analyze the numbers. In both cases the PLA is the strongest between these three. 3 point bending test, distance between supports is 50 mm and these loads will be placed one by one and I am measuring the deformation after 1, 30 and 60 seconds, this is under 2.5 kg load, under 5 kg, very similar deformation on the PLA and PTG and this is under 10 kg. Now this graph is not really typical for these materials. First of all PTG and the PLA had very similar deformation except here on 10 kg we have less deformation on the PLA compared to the PTG. But look at this ASA, not only that it has bigger deformation but also on 10 kg it constantly deforms. Theoretically the ASA is good against the creeping, only this means that this load of 10 kg is too big for this material and it constantly deforms during this one minute. Basically in all three cases you should avoid uh, overloading the objects but definitely it's true for the ASA. Impact test with this half kilogram hammer and here the ASA should be far the best. This is PLA. 0 position. PTG. ASA. Well, if you need a tough material, then definitely from these three, the ASC is far the best. This is the zero position of the hammer, and this is after breaking the PLA test object, after PTG, and this is after ASA. This means ASA is the toughest material, PTG the most brittle, and PLA, well, somewhere between. And as a summary, all results one more time without any additional comments. Layer adhesion test. Shear test. Bending test, deformation after 30 seconds, this is the complete bending test result. Torque or twist test, impact test, temperature test and the shrinking. And first I answer my question from the intro, uh, what's the problem with the PLA? Well, even if the load and temperature is small, but it will be close to those uh, 45, 50 degrees Celsius, and the PLA will start with the creeping even on the lower temperature, so definitely that's why I wouldn't use the PLA. 
what is the problem with the ASA? Well, actually not much. ASA could be very good and I will use ASA if I would need only one holder for one stepper motor. But as I mentioned, I need uh, the distance between shafts exactly 100 millimeters. And the disadvantage of the ASA is that shrinking of the half percent. So in this case, if the temperature is not too high, I would prefer PETG because of better dimensional accuracy. Theoretically, we can compensate this shrinking in the design or even in a slicer, but it is not always that simple. If you have some complex objects, uh, that shrinking may be different in different directions. So we will never use PLA for the functional parts, well not really, I like to use the PLA for the parts which are not under constant stress, they will be on room temperature, and don't forget PLA still has the best uh, layer adhesion. And when to use the ASA or ABS, well for the higher temperature resistance, and you saw if you need some impact resistant part, definitely ABS or ASA is a good choice. <laughs> In the meantime I got the spool of the nylon, this is PS666 from the Insogic, this is in natural color. PT didn't arrive earlier because it would be a great comparison between 4 and not 3 basic materials. Maybe in a review video of this nylon I will include the data from this video. But basically pattern supporters can compare these numbers with just few clicks. Huge thanks to them because they keep me motivated to do this kind of big work too. I tried to make this video some kind of tutorial for the beginners too. I hope it was not too boring to my experienced viewers. Anyway, thank you for watching this video and happy printing.